the i do you know what i think i think we've come to this point of where we're kind of treating ourselves like a commodity right and by that i mean we we look at what we have to offer and what we've got what we look like what we dress like and what, how much money we've got and whatever else and then based off of that we then try and work out our self-work right and then in doing that we then uh, i'm a quiet person i like loud music but i like softer speaking and i and not talking to people that i don't need to talk to right okay now that's fair enough but I, I think that, like I said, we, we, we put these values and, and then we forget that, you know, you would like to find a partner, right? And uh, some would call it uh, being shy, I guess. Well, possibly, possibly. But if you were to start looking into, I tell you what, try this, try this for a little bit right try going out and then just try talking to a woman but not with the intentions of dating just talk to them because they're just another human being just the same as what you are granted they're just like there's bad men out there there's also bad women but just talk to them without any agenda of wanting to find a partner because you know like anything in this life the more you do it the better you get at it And then hopefully then that won't be a problem much for you. You know, I don't know, you play games, didn't you? I mean, there must be women on there that play games as well. Uh, yeah, but they're still strangers and women. Well, yeah, true. They are strangers and women, but you're also in a position right now where you want a partner. So you're just going to have to, you know, bite the bullet a bit and 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 just go for it because the alternative is is loneliness and that's not something that i want for you that's for sure 100 percent. that's not what i want for you. and i know deep down because otherwise you wouldn't be saying it, that that's what you want for yourself so now you've got a little bit of an internal struggle right of where you're going to have to push yourself it, it's it's such a shame in this life that you don't you can't always get what you want right it, it's a shame that it's it's kind of difficult to be able to get what you want um but the thing is is if you don't try you're never going to get anything right and and i think for me that's the biggest thing you know as long as you're trying and then also don't get disheartened just because the first couple of times or whatever else it's been a complete disaster it just doesn't work you know if something was worth doing it's worth doing well and you see i've never actually met you blue we've had a couple of conversations i think you're a fantastic guy right and i know that once you start getting out there and pushing yourself a bit more than what you're doing at the moment right yeah, you're going to make mistakes in the beginning. Everyone does. But I guarantee to you, right, I'm almost 100% posi uh, positive. You are going to find the woman or the man or the person of your dreams. But the thing is, is that you're not going to do that by not pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. I'd love to say otherwise. I'd love to turn around and say, you know what, Blue? Don't worry about it. It will happen to you. Because it, it won't nothing happens to you and unless bad things they always happen regardless whether you want them to or not but nothing good just happens you have to make it happen and you know you've outlined a couple of problems as to why that you you you're not actually dating anybody at the moment so then get help for those problems and and from the sounds of it and only i'm only saying from the sounds of it uh, all the girls I've had relationships with have made it obvious to me that they like me. There you go. Made it obvious to me they like me. There you go. So then there's nothing wrong with you. So what we're seeing here is a block 
from your perspective. And it's your perspective, so you're blocking yourself. Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, and, and don't just like, like think, oh, yeah. You actually ask yourself, why, if I actually want this and I'm saying I want it, why am I stopping myself from getting it? What, because I'm a bit shy? Well, okay, what do I do to get unshy? Well, all I can give you advice on there is that, like anything in life, the more you do it, the better you get at it. She's something I say to my missus all the time, but she just, she, she says, she says no a lot, but you know. <laughs> Mate, you're a large fellow. Dude, when I met my missus, I was around... Christ almighty, what did I, oh no, actually, I was, I was a bit thinner than I am now, but since I've been with my missus, I went up to 35 stone. So, and I've always been a big guy. I've never had a problem with women. Because like I said to you earlier on, they like confidence. Yes, of course, for some people, it's all about the wrappings. But if you're funny and you're confident and you can you know, make them laugh and whatever else, that's 90% of your job done. If you got bulging biceps and a six pack, well then you're the full package. But that doesn't mean to say that you're, you're not lovable by anybody else, because you are. To my understanding, most women don't uh, care for large men. The same men, the same most men don't care for large women. Well, I mean, you'd be surprised. There's, there's lots of, look, like I said, there's a key for every lot. There is. And, you know, so, okay, then, so you're saying that you're a large guy and, and do you think that that's playing a part in you being able to find someone? Because the next thing I'm going to turn around and say is, is that you could do something about that. So again, that's another block that you've kind of put on yourself. I don't mean to be harsh to you, yeah? but at some point, you've got to try and get beyond the the what's causing it, and and actually start to think, okay, well, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and these are things that are in my control to sort out. And if you're that, if you're that determined where you want somebody, you'll do it. You will do it. Like speaking to you for as long as I have now, I kind of know the fact that you're, you're definitely up for a challenge. And I don't think that you're afraid of, of like pushing yourself to your, your limits. It's just that when you, when you sat there in your place and you're all alone, that horrible git depression comes in and says, nah, no, it's too hard today. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. Let's just lay here. Let's just lay down here and do you know what? Make yourself feel a bit better. Go and, go and get yourself something to eat. Come on. I've got you. You, you relax with me and, and everything will be fine. And, you, and I'm suffering with it myself. You, you, you all know that. And it's been happening to me now for the last couple of weeks, to be perfectly honest. That's why I haven't been streaming much. And today I feel just as... I don't feel as bad as what I've done the last few days, but I still do feel bad. But I'm here. I could quite easily turn this stream off right now and go and get myself back into bed. But I refuse. I refuse point blank to do it refuse I, I can't say that anymore because that is exactly what i'm doing i'm just refusing to give up and and you know what am i gonna feel any better afterwards probably not probably not but you know what i've got a day now where i can turn around and say i didn't let it win 
and I can be proud of that day. And I am. I'm proud of every day that I can push myself. It doesn't happen very often. And that's not because I don't want it to happen. That's because some days are just so bad. You just can't. I get it. And on those days, please, anybody else that's suffering with the same or similar kind of problems, you know, allow yourself the day. Allow yourself a couple of days. You know, get yourself right. Get yourself in a bit of better headspace and whatever. You know, even when you're bodybuilding, you know, one of the most important things in bodybuilding is to allow your muscles to rest and repair. And you've got to do that with this condition too. But there comes a point where you realize, okay, well, we're, we're, we've gone way beyond the rest and repair thing now. Now it's time to kick my backside and do it. And you have to. And just like in your situation, Blue, you know, you have to. You have to start trying to help yourself. Because as what is obviously apparent in this world that we live in right now, is nobody else really wants to help you. So you're on your own, mate. Not, not completely on your own, because there's always going to be people like me around. Because, you know, I'll do anything for anybody to help anybody out. Even if it is just like an ear to, to listen or with an opinion or whatever else. Or just to be there. You know, I, 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 I'll help anybody. Anybody I can. And and that's not just because I'm a like super nice guy or I've got a cape on or whatever else. It is purely because I'm in a position where I could do with that help myself. And I know what it feels like, you know? So, if, I mean, I don't do anything else. I don't work. I don't work because I'm disabled and whatever, as you all know. Um, so, I have a lot of free time on my hands. And, you know, if I'm able and I'm up to it, I, I'll, I'll do it. Because suffering, suffering alone is not fun. No matter what anybody says, suffering is not fun. Especially when it's as as easy as picking up the phone for somebody. When giving some or even giving somebody a bit of encouragement, like with, with you, Blue. Like I'm hoping that you haven't taken anything I've said as negative or you know that you've got the ump of anything I've said. I, I truly wish that you could find somebody. Because you're a nice guy and you've got some lovely cats and you deserve just like everybody else to be happy. You do. Everybody deserves to be happy. Everybody. We forget sometimes, I think, that how much control we have over our lives. We just let our feelings and emotions get the better of us sometimes. But we also have the ability of kicking it into high gear and saying, no, this is not the direction I want to go in. I would like to change course, please. And we're going to do it. And it's difficult because once your brain has been trained to do something and to like something, it's very difficult to get it to stop. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. If it was impossible, the world would go to shit. I'm sorry, there's no other way of putting it. It, it would. Uh, I want to get back into the gym, but asthma is kicking my butt. I don't want to make excuses, but I'd rather not go triggering my asthma more than I already have to. Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. See, so like what you could, uh, have you actually been to the gym and actually turned around and said to him that I suffer with asthma? So obviously like cardio work and stuff is going to be very difficult for me to do because of being out of breath. Right? But not every exercise you do has to get you out of breath. Like for argument's sake, and this is this is just a small one, right? So you, I, I think you live in a flat, don't you? So it could just be as easy as saying, okay, I get home from work and I'm, I'm just spitballing numbers. Here. Obviously, I don't know your routine. But turn around and say, I get home from work at 7 p.m. at night. 
right? I'll cook myself something to eat and whatever else, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I'll sit down on the computer and I'll, I'll do whatever it is that I'm going to do. Right? Well, what you could do then is, uh, uh, these are gyms at work and I only went in the afternoon shift because I don't, uh, I didn't want to work out in front of anyone. Yeah, no, that's fine. What about going for a walk? And you haven't got to start off like going and walking a marathon, you know, a, a 10 minute walk. Remember, right, if you don't walk anywhere now, right, and then you decided, okay, I am going to go on a five or 10 minute walk. Do you know what you've just done? You have increased your exercise a hundred percent because you didn't do it before. And that is exercise, and that will help. It, it doesn't have to be about going to the gym. It doesn't have to be about, you know, buying weights and gym equipment and having this ridiculous regime, which is almost impossible to stick to because of life and whatever else. It can start with the most subtlest, smallest things in the world. Tiny things. Actually, I considered riding a bike to work, but I don't own a bike. Well, that, that's fine. That's not a problem. It's like, you know, when you're sitting there at the moment and, and you're probably just sat there watching watching me and, and whoever else or whatever else at the moment on your screen. Have you got a can of beans or a can of something in, in the cupboard? You could be sat there right now and you could just be arm curling a can of beans. You could do like 30 or 40 of them or just 50 of them. You're not going to get out of breath by doing that. Equally, that's 100% more exercise than you're actually doing. And then if you start coupling all of this lot together, right, your general health and fitness is going to start to go up because you're not just vegetating, because you're actually doing something, right? And then maybe, maybe you'll start to get a little bit healthier and then maybe you might actually be able to go to the gym because you're not going to be puffing out your backside from doing anything that's strenuous. And even if that isn't a goal, you know, you're still doing 100% more exercise than you were doing. And it's just, it's such a small thing. You know, people, people genu genuinely underestimate the smallest of things can make the biggest impacts. And it's just t teeny tiny little lifestyle changes. You know, you, you drink, right? And let's say for argument's sake, let's say for argument's sake, you drink six cans a night, right? I'm not saying you do, but let's just say that you do. So then only drink five. You've only cut one out, but that one can is 100% less than what you were drinking. Well, not 100% less, but you know what I mean? It's less than what you were drinking before. You don't always have to go out and just smash things 100% you can ease yourself into it you know I, I I know of very little people very few people that throw themselves into an exercise regimen and a diet and they just go from eating everything they want sitting on the backside doing nothing for ages to being this full-fledged Olympic athlete and keep up with it most of them all fail because it's just too much of a change but for the people that actually take their time and do little bit by little bit by little bit and then just slowly increase it they're the ones that are still going to the gym they're the ones that have changed their lives they're the ones that are now healthier fitter you know and happier i'm not saying that happiness is is in uh conducive with fitness and everything else and and looking good but it, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. And most people just think, oh, what, lifting a can of beans? How is that going to make any difference? Well, maybe the can of beans isn't. But the fact that you're starting to think that way and you're doing this now, maybe that's your catalyst to start to do other stuff. It's just, look, it's just, that's just my, my thoughts on it. And it's kind of what I've been doing for quite some time now. And I've managed to lose almost 10 stone in weight. I'm still a big guy. 
but I've lost a lot of weight. And yeah, it's a slow process. Not like I've done it in a couple of months. I think in the last three years I've lost 10 stone. Which, I don't know if that's an impressive feat or whatever else, or whether or not it's just slow and concise. But what I can tell you, and say, is I started this about three, four years ago, and uh, I'm still 10 stone down. It's not like I'm going up in weight. Just something to think about. It's strange, like the little things and how much they can really affect change. But whatever you decide to do, Blue, I sincerely hope you have success in it. I hope you find somebody. I hope they make you incredibly happy. Because from what I know about you, you deserve to be happy. A little bit of pain now. What time are we on? Hour and 26. It's not bad. Yeah, I can honestly see me doing one of these myself. I just, I'm loving the colours already and the fact that it's Harry Potter when I just knocks it out. Yeah, it's it's kind of annoying for me to be positive and, and inspirational. Not that I'm trying to be inspirational, I'm just giving the benefit of my you know my experience in this. It's just horrible when I get those days and I can't do it. Because it's like, well, you're the guy that says this, you're the guy that says it does, and you can't do it. It's like, you just can't do it all the time. Sometimes you just can't. And I get it. And what I will turn around and say is to anybody else out there that is, you know, struggling and, and like gets fired up and, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it, and then they can't do it. That's fine to not be able to do it there and then. Just don't give up. Tomorrow's another day. I'm great at giving advice. I can't abide to, uh, can't abide to because uh, you say when to do. Yeah, well, this this is why I, I try and only give advice that I do myself because that way then it's been tried and tested. And unlike unlike most people, where they don't allow you to have a bit of an out, you know, it's like, oh no, you can't do that. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep going. Go on, go on, get up. Do this, do that, do that. And they just don't understand. They think it's that easy. You know, if it was that easy, I wouldn't need you in the first bloody place. You know what I mean? The problem is, is that everybody has this on paper, you know, bullet point of how to get better. And the problem is, is that not everybody is an on paper bullet point person. Everybody's individual. And what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. But, you know, medical fields love their bullet points they love to be able to turn around and say this do this do this and that's it but it doesn't work that way but unfortunately it's the best we've got so you know i, I think that what you should be able to do is try and personalize it to fit your your narrative you know i mean at the end of the day you can't just sit there and and expect results if you're not even going to try and push yourself you know, you can't turn around and say, oh, I'm going to do this diet. I've been on it for six months and I haven't lost anything. Well, how many times did you actually follow it? Oh, twice. Well, there you go then. <laughs> that's that's why, you know. Uh, but if you can turn around and say, I, I've done it for like four months out of the six because the other ones I just couldn't do. And it's like, okay, fair enough. Well, let's see where you are now as to where you were. And I guarantee you would have worked a bit. And even if it works a bit, that's a win.
and you know the problem is is that when it comes to exercise and changing things your body doesn't want to because your body's comfortable doing it because if it wasn't it would be telling you it wasn't you know it would be making you feel bad and 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 you know but because it's not feeling bad it doesn't want to change the body doesn't like changing things your brain doesn't want to have to you know sit there and make another electrical current to be able to work out that this is what we do now it's, it wants to keep you warm and comfy at home because that's where you're warm and comfy nothing's going to happen to you there so that's what it wants to do and when you're alone you can't be in any danger because you're alone sometimes you just got to push sorry to go on so much about that but it's like it's affecting me right now personally so, you know, as much as i'm telling this to all you as a bit of advice i'm also trying to say it to myself at the same time what's this uh, my eating habits are mostly healthier uh, than they used to be but i'm still a food addict and i love to indulge uh, used to be i uh, uh, my relationship with food has completely changed I, I no longer eat now stuff that I enjoy. I just eat to fuel my body. I know that probably sounds a little bit on the ridiculous side, but it's true. I just, I, I genuinely just eat now to fuel my body. It just so happens that the food that I'm getting at the moment, I'm actually enjoying. Because the problem is with eating the food that you enjoy it is that everything's bad. And it's designed that way it is designed to be that way you know when you talk about people that are have a food addiction you know when you talk to an alcoholic or a drug addict right uh, an alcoholic doesn't need alcohol to live a drug addict doesn't need that drug to live a food addict well you kind of need to eat food to live right so in my opinion it is the worst of the addictions but that also plays into your psyche and, and and mental mental health as well because when you sit back and you go after a, a a nice meal and you've had a dessert and you go oh that dessert was the best thing i've ever had oh my god i enjoyed that so much it was lovely well basically you've just told your brain that the most the best thing in your life to do is eat this this dessert which is full of calories and probably isn't going to do you any good but you've enjoyed it so much right that now we're going to crave that whenever we feel bad because it's oh my god okay woo, woo, woo. the humans the, the, this person's now feeling bad they eat they're down so what do we do when they're down oh that was it yeah and they like eating sweet stuff and and sweet stuff will make them feel great and put them back on top again okay right let's put cravings in for sweet stuff and then you'll go and buy sweet stuff or you'll go and buy alcohol or you go and buy drugs because they make you feel better because your brain has been told that that's what makes you feel better 